yesterday I sprayed all the rain. I'm going back out now over something again with a different chemical that wouldn't tank mix with what I was spraying yesterday. So half it I've got to do with something else. So I've just filled up with water now. I'm going to go off and do that. I've got loads, loads of people's birthdays actually today. So I've nearly run out of bumper space. I'm not going to read them all out because I might not pronounce the names properly so it's easy just to show you. The plan is to go finish spraying this rape now. I've got some wheat and stuff to, to spray but hopefully I can do that during the week and I've got some pre-emergent spray and I can wash out as well. And then this afternoon I'm going to try and cut the sunflowers. That was the field last night of oil seed rape that looked white. I know the difference in daylight because obviously the LED lights on the dune made it look sort of well, white. <laughs> Perfectly still day for spraying. You can see the smoke out the factories is just pretty much going straight up. Apart from the smoke from the fertilizer factory, which is behind the turbines, behind that tree. Can you see now, there, zoom in. There it is, nothing at all. So, one of the biggest fertilizer factories in the UK for the currently mothballed probably for profit taking yeah so we think they've sold the gas they bought cheap last year made huge profits they don't need to produce fertilizer and i've got a graph actually that i think sarah put in the whatsapp group we have yesterday for the nfu and it shows how many people are reliant on synthetic fertilizers in other words without them they wouldn't be able to eat so i'll put that up now right what we're doing now is Pigeons obviously flying off. We've got barley growing in this oil seed rate, as you can see in such stripes where there's bits of what we call takes the pigeons there. Tailings flying out of the combine, so like light grains and stuff of weed seeds. So they're growing. But this spray now will take them out, hopefully leave the rake behind. It'd be nice if it didn't taste very nice and it stopped the pigeons eating it, but I'm not sure it does. Olivia's been writing on the window. Farming for your food. Quite a good saying. I don't think they're supposed to be there because I don't have any sheep. It's not pigeons, it's sheep. Nice flat field, cruising at 18 and a half K. Got some fly tip tires there. And this field is a bit there in the middle to the point where it might end up getting ripped up and something spring putting maybe put some mustard in the middle of the field perhaps. Anyway, the headlands aren't too bad, but the middle's just a bit burned and slug burnt. Folding up now and I'm starving. Got a big tank on the sprayer, so when you leave the yard, instead of being out for like an hour and a half, you're now out for three hours, you get really hungry. So fold up, go back, get something to eat, and then we're gonna see if we can cut these sunflowers and Robin's gonna try and sort the brakes out on the 1455 as well. Chuckle Brothers are here, to me, to you. Oh look, no fuel in the Merlot. Anyway, half the trumpet houses on now. It's the other half to go in in a minute. Olivia, that, that's a lesson in weight transfer. So because the weight block's on the floor, it's transferred some weight to the back wheel. And because the drill's folded up, it's transferred some weight to the back wheel. So now the tire looks extra soft. But when you lift the weight block up and fold the drill out, it'll be fine. Hitched up to the header now, so take it across on the stubble field and hitch up on there to the combine. Feels like ages since I drove this. I think it's about eight weeks. That's a look back through the videos to see when it was we finished cutting beans. And I'm gonna go around this headland and get to the sunflowers over sort of around there. And then we'll see if we can find it in the screen, sunflowers. So look through the menu, we've got a sunflower setting. So we'll press play on sunflowers. And it will load up the settings. Hopefully with this header, it should be all right and they won't want to fall forwards because we've obviously got the belts to catch them. But sometimes they can be top heavy and fall forwards. So I'm gonna go cut them high and leave the weed on the floor if I can. Still loading the data, taking a while. It's a bit strange. There you go, sorted. Off we go, cutting some flowers. Escape our lamps, see the main menu. I'm 
not sure if you can see, but basically most of them have been here. In fact, we'll jump off now and have a look, shall we? So, right down. If you look at this head here, there's only a few left at the bottom. So, 80% of it has been eaten. That one the same, 60-70%. That one completely. Fresher one's got a few in. Yeah. Pigeons have just demolished them basically. In other news though, they're still blowing the cornflowers. Every so often going this way, it'll grab all the one, fling it out forwards. So we can see. There you go, there's one. <laughs> Like hooks on the rail and flicks it. There's Thomas, aka my dad, getting the signs, putting them in the bucket from the maze. Ready for next year if we do it, but I'm not so sure yet. A bit dirty that window, isn't it? See this white? It's like polystyrene. That's the middle of the stems after it's gone through the chopper. It'd be really good if they used it, maybe Amazon for packaging. Parcels, perhaps. Can't believe the damage the pigeons have done. There's hardly anything left. They say I hate pigeons. Should we get some t-shirts that I hate pigeons made up? That one's not too bad. Gonna take this fencing down and see if we can lift the header up over the hedge, get into this field. That one is still flowering. So that's a good few weeks off. Right, I've got the header lifted right up. So hopefully, if we get it over the hedge this side, then tilt it the other way. Let's just lift it up and tilt it now. Get it over the hedge that side. And we're in. We'll have to take the header off, level it. Drop it down. Okay, see better than that. Turn it on. And off we go into the second field, which is actually the first one to ripen. So, might be a bit drier in this field. There's Chester and Charlotte. You gonna say hello? The menu. <laughs> oh, hello. <laughs> hello, you. I'm a bit sweaty, I just had to jump in the tank and knock the last bit out because when I started before, I didn't have anything set quite right. And it was quite sticky and damp and bits of leaf and stuff. And it was sticking on the floor of the, of the tank. So I've emptied it out now. This feels a lot drier, so it should be all right now. That's the second field cup now. And I've only got, I don't know, a third in the tank of what I had off that field. And, I, and they were similar size. It just shows you how much the pigeons have eaten the first field more and the heads weren't as big. Anyway, I'm gonna empty out now, and then um, that's it for today. See if Robin's finished the 14.55. 14.55 now, it is ready to go. So we can hear it. The lads, I've just had it running out, I've just revved it from cold. Right, where's reverse? I think it's that one. clutch on it, just takes a bit of getting used to. Yeah, it's going to um, blow that tire up, a bit soft. It's taking the exhaust off to see what it sounds like with a straight pipe. Stepping back into the 1970s. 
Arktis. got back now we can only get 26 or 7k out of it i mean i think it might only do 30 but is that a splitter like they used to have on the 95 series because it doesn't seem to do anything does anyone know whether they had a splitter on these robin thinks they did big thanks to robin and jaron for sorting out that robin burnt his hands taking the exhaust off <laughs> there it goes That's probably it for today now. The lads are going to go and play on the MB track. I'm just going to lock everything up. Got a family meal tonight. The 936 is still dead in the workshop, waiting for the drive shaft. I think they maybe they take all the wheels off it now. We finish with the axle stands on the 1455, get the wheels painted while it's out of action, and then it's ready for then taking round, and we can jet wash it all once it's got the new drive shaft ready for respraying, because by the time the drive shaft's on, I think we'll have finished autumn work, so we can get on with it. Um, Friends selling a 7, 8, 10 John Deere. It sounds awesome and it also is right money. And it's obviously a, a classic tractor it's going to appreciate. Was that a better investment than a quad track? What do you think? Let me know anyway. Thanks to everyone that's watching. Thanks to all the new subscribers. If you want to subscribe, it's up there. If you want to watch another video, it's up there. And I'll see you all tomorrow.